Um, this is joint work um, with Stefan Kitzler, Pietro Sageza, and Bernhard Haselhofer, who is also with us today. And this has originally been published in ACM Transactions on the web in 23, and we've been invited to give this talk here as well. So um, I'm going to keep it light um, as it's the last talk. Um, this is the agenda. We'll move with introduction and research question and uh, then dive into the details. To begin, um, I briefly kind of want to uh, start with some context. So decentralized finance, um, there are essentially uh, financial services in the form of smart contracts deployed on top of distributed ledger technologies. This is still somewhat of a new paradigm, and it intends to disrupt established financial markets. Now, it builds on smart contracts, and they are executable software programs to carry out predetermined instructions. And they typically use crypto assets, which can be implemented with smart contracts, um, but can also be native assets like ETH or BTC and uh, yeah, several others. DeFi protocols are like I said in the beginning, financial service providers. And examples of these are decentralized exchanges, lending platforms, derivatives, um, and yeah, they typically build on these crypto assets. Now, here's an example of such a DeFi composition. Suppose you use the service one inch, um, you'd go to their website, and maybe you want to exchange one asset for another, namely USDT against KYL. What would happen is they would give you some rate, and then they would show uh, a certain route that you would take down here, and we can look at how that looks like. It essentially <clears throat> would be using SushiSwap as a different service and Uniswap to perform this swap. And from a graph perspective, it kind of looks like this. Um, there is the external user uh, who has an account who would send a transaction to one inch, which in turn would make transactions with SushiSwap, which in turn calls these crypto assets, and also Uniswap, which in turn also calls these crypto assets. So that's a composition. Um, and we typically think of these as like financial Legos because you can build one on top of each other. Um, and this is interesting because it's a huge market. Um, it reached up to 170 billion US dollars that were locked by these contracts um, and currently sits at about 90 billion. Now, it's possible for rational agents to uh, subvert the intended design of these DeFi protocols and maximize their revenues. And that's why it's interesting to study this. But so far, this has mostly been done with individual protocols. And of course, we also see such services um, yeah, being interoperable and integrate with the web. And that's another reason why this is interesting. Now, the research question that we have is, since up till now, this has only been limitedly investigated and might lead to unforeseeable systemic risks if it's not well understood, is how are these DeFi protocols composed? Um, to answer that question, we would first need to have a definition of what we mean with a protocol, really. So a DeFi protocol is a decentralized application that facilitates specific financial service functions defined and implemented by a set of protocol-specific code accounts, aka smart contracts. A composition, therefore, then is uh, when one account leverages one or more other accounts belonging to at least another DeFi protocol within a single transaction. We limit it to a single transaction in this case. Now, we study this from two different perspectives. One is the macroscopic approach, uh, where we look at the network structure. And the second approach is a microscopic perspective, where we try to extract building blocks um, that are being reused in these compositions. So to do this, we had to collect some data. Um, we did this by looking at DeFi polls, um, where you can sort of find the most popular DeFi protocols. Um, and uh, they sort this into various categories, decentralized exchanges, lending protocols, derivatives, and general assets. Um, and we've collected this data in 2021 for about half a year and labeled manually 23 of such DeFi protocols and therefore extended this to 10 million protocol-specific smart contracts. We've pre-processed this a little bit to make it more workable by looking at whether they also automatically deploy contracts and labeled these as well. Now, from a macroscopic perspective, um, we looked at two network abstractions. One is the uh, contract account network, which is visualized here. Same color means same protocol. And uh, the protocol network, where we basically aggregate this and say, well, if it's the same protocol, um, we reduce this to a smaller networks. Now, um, one thing that we thought about is uh, we could employ traditional um, graph methods to understand this in more detail. And the idea here is 
if they would find um, yeah, densely connected uh, sub-networks within this um, that are solely a single protocol, that would sort of mean it's not entangled, it's not uh, composed of uh, different protocols. So we can ask for strongly connected components. For example, do these protocols contract accounts fall into separate components? And it looks like uh, for one instance, this actually happens. So one inch, the, that service seems to be mostly, but only mostly, not entirely, in a single strongly connected component. But the majority of other DeFi protocols seem to be intertwined, seem to be entangled. Um, so this points to uh, that there is possibly compositions happening here. But still on a very high level, we did a very similar approach with community detection algorithms, which sort of give a similar idea here. While there is um, sort of a high normalized mutual information um, between um, these uh, contract account networks, um, it still is the case that there is a low F1 score across different uh, community detection algorithms, which also suggests that these uh, protocols are intertwined, indicating compositions. Perhaps more interesting is the microscopic perspective where we try to extract building blocks. And here, I'm mostly going to focus on the intuition. Um, and so what we try to do is look at individual uh, protocol calls. And so uh, we might see, like I showed in the beginning, uh, a composition where certain um, sub-protocols are being used, for example, two different swaps. Um, and so here what we would be doing is um, from the bottom up, starting from the leaf nodes, um, basically find uh, a certain pattern, ex replace it by a hash, and try to find the same pattern in other um, contract calls. So we look at lots of lots of individual contract calls and basically collapse these calls into uh, calls of patterns, um, and then uh, we do this iteratively um, and also in a nested fashion. So in this case, it would mean we have uh, oops going back um, we would have two building blocks contained in one larger building block. So then when we have something like this, uh, I can show this also on a very concrete example that we've seen in the beginning. Um, what we would do is uh, abstract um, this view into uh, individual calls to these assets at the very bottom, and then step by step find these building blocks, um, which would mean um, there is like a factory deployed contract calling some assets in a particular structure, in a particular pattern. Now, once we have this, we can actually uh, count which one of these appear particularly frequent and also how they might be nested. So we see, for example, uh, a swap call that looks something like this, making three calls to assets, um, appears 21 million times in our time frame. Um, but the very same pattern here on the right with sushi swap looks exactly the same, happens a bit less, but uh, this is sort of a yeah, a good finding because um, SushiSwap is actually a clone of Uniswap, so this is sort of expected to see. What's also interesting is that this pattern here is essentially contained here um, because this is just the larger pattern. Um, and so we can, this way, identify the building blocks and uh, sort of find what's very common. Now, um, what we can then do is, since we have these building blocks labeled, and associated to a certain protocol, we can look at uh, individual protocols and see how often do they actually um, make calls to other protocols. And so this would be the view on uh, one inch, where we can say for a very large fraction of all its calls, it's not really talking to other protocols, but uh, for maybe 40% of the, the transactions, it will make calls to Uniswap or SushiSwap or 0x um, and uh, here in this where there's a two, it will make uh, even calls to two separate protocols this frequently. And so we can look at this uh, for every protocol um, to understand it in more detail. Um, we can also uh, take a different perspective by looking at um, which of these protocols here on the left is making calls to other protocols and how frequently it's happening across these categories. So for example, we can say, uh, what about um, 
certain lending protocols or decentralized exchanges. And what we find here is uh, the diagonal is where the majority of uh, calls are being made. And that essentially means that the protocols make calls to itself. But we also see, for example, that InstaDEP, which is a known aggregator of different services, is actually showing up uh, with Aave, with Compound here, but also with ZeroX and Uniswap. So this is uh, an example that's uh, particularly entangled, you could say. Now, there are some limitations to this work. Um, namely, this was a limited time frame, so we focused more on the methodology. You could run the same thing today, and you could study kind of current protocols and how they're entangled. And uh, we've only uh, covered single transaction compositions. In reality, multi-transaction compositions can also occur. You can imagine a single transaction sort of uh, borrowing some funds over a certain time period and then using them with a different protocol. Um, and that's not encompassed here. That could be future work. Now, conclusion is we studied these 23 DeFi protocols uh, in 2021, macroscopic and microscopic perspective. Um, interactions among protocols primarily occur in strongly connected components, and known community detection cannot in disentangle these DeFi protocols. We've proposed an algorithm to extract these building blocks and found that swaps play an essential role and some protocols make extensive use of compositions. Now, there are a lot more details in the paper. We also have a poster coming up in half an hour if you want to talk to us or have very detailed questions. And in general, if you want to learn more about DeFi, we've also had another work recently published on the technology of decentralized finance. Um, that could be interesting for you as well. Thank you.